box for comment. Are you stretching muscle? <laughs> oh, I, I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was supposed to pay attention. <laughs> okay. Um, minutes from July 11th. Are there, is there a motion to accept? Oh, don't jump up, all at once. Jeez, Louise. <laughs> I know y'all didn't want to have an August meeting, but you're here, so let's participate. I make a motion to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Sure. Thank you. Are there any changes that need to be made or any other comments? In that case, all in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. I have a question. It's not really pertaining to the vote, but it, I just, so it's really a question maybe for Jess. So we, it, that did, it doesn't really matter for this one because we went into executive session and then I just brought the vote forward from the executive session because all we did is vote on the mm -hmm. minutes. So do I need to take that out to like have the official one that we keep on file? Jess, what did you do? Do you remember? Um, when we had the executive session uh, in July, you I wrote up the you wrote up the ah uh, okay. But I didn't do anything. Do with anything with okay. the third step. Share them with you. Okay. All. Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, this is all we talked about in executive session. Is that we voted the minutes, and I brought that vote you know, forward, oh. but just, you know, it might pertain tonight. If we have a more lengthy discussion, I'll just want to know what to do, but I can deal with that next week. I'll find, I mean, next month, I'll find out between then, then and now. Um, probably good to check with. I'll check with Jessica. Clerk. Yep. And the other Jessica. Because okay. then I will know what to do with the other ones as well. Yeah. Okay. Director's report. Uh, Okay, so uh, it's it's been a fairly busy month, um, as you all know. The you know kind of the big news is that uh, Julia Lloyd has accepted um, the offer to become the head of youth services here in the library. She's going to start that position September. I believe it's Tuesday, September fifth. Is it? I think that's Labor Day. Yep. Weekend, so she'll be starting that Tuesday. Um, we're really very excited about that. She's, um, as I mentioned in previous meetings, she's really been kind of, you know, heroically keeping things keeping things going, and and um, has been really great, and is already inhabiting, you know, I think fully the role that we expect her to to be jumping into um, in September. So that's been amazing. That's wonderful. Yeah, it's yeah. great news. Yeah. Yeah. So we. We do have a vacancy right now for, um, oh, we will have a vacancy for the youth services coordinator position that she is leaving to become the head. Um, and we do have that out. We have received some uh, resumes and uh, letters for that position. Probably, I, I've lost track now of four, four, five, six in that range. Um, and uh, so we're hoping to be able to fill that shortly thereafter and that 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 position the way we've done it um is that that the emphasis of that position is now going to be more on the younger children mm -hmm. um to help with the story time programs the you know the um, the young families that come in so that we can also have hopefully someone on saturdays to be here because julie will not be here on saturday so i'll have Six day week coverage of the children's room. Um, so we're excited about that. Um, I did send around an updated um, trustee and staff contact sheet. I hope everyone looked at that. And if you saw something, there were some errors and we caught all of them that I you know, could see. But if you see anything else, let me know. And I'll update it further and then send it back around. Uh, informationally, we did get a last cleaning quote uh, we did have a, we had a custodial meeting um, with gary bird 
and um, Scott McCarthy and um, and Ed, the new um, the new maintenance person that's working for us, uh, mostly on custodial issues. And um, they were getting, I guess, they're actually going forward. With, they're having the glass cleaned over at the at the castle on aging. Um, so I asked him just so we would have a rough sense of what what it would cost to do that when it comes time. Um, and sense that well, you know, it, it's it's kind of a lot. Um, yes, it I mean, is. It's certainly not something that you would do every year, but it's four thousand seven hundred ninety-five dollars, and that's all the glass inside and out. Um, so at some point, I mean, they don't really look that bad to me at this point. So, no, but it's good to know we'll, we'll need to be prepared to shell out something along those lines because the DPW is not that they they will do some minor. You know, touch ups around doors where fingers are smudging things, but they're not going to deal with, you know, all of it. Can I suggest yeah. when the time comes in the future to ask for one that includes the clear story windows and one that doesn't? Because I think if, you know, until, unless or until there is such a time that the sun is being blocked from the clear story windows, and if you're standing at the circ desk and the sun is shining in, that might not be such a bad thing. But it those don't strike me as ones that would be likely to need or benefit or have the cleaning appreciated as much as the rest. And clearly, access to the roof and da 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 da, da will make the cost much higher. Um, and inside, you know, because you'd have to get a, you'd have to get to both sides. Then yeah. I don't believe they those don't open, so you'd also have to have some sort of a lift. To get up there, so but I th that's why I'm suggesting. Yeah, no, that's the very good yeah. one. And once there are solar panels up there, those might get in the way of that access. And that, isn't it the case that the clear store windows have the roof sort of overhang a little yeah. bit, so they're more protected than the others as well? But anyway, a thought for the future. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, so the the. Contact from the Ham, Hamden Hampshire Conservation District that we um, talked about at the last meeting did come by, uh, looked at the looked at the library, you know, looked at the grounds, did confirm that this looked like a good candidate for one of the projects. Um, she would like to potentially attend a trustees meeting or either attend or be zoomed in um, to to kind of give a a summary of how that would work and, and kind of get the ball rolling. So I don't know if next the next meeting is a is a good time for that, but I can, you know, if that's agreeable, I will, you know, let her know that that would be a good time. And for you. Do we have any objections to her coming in September? I think I don't. Does she want to get it planted this fall? I don't think I, I don't think it would happen that fast. Okay. I, think it's, I think there's no rush okay. on this. It could really happen at any time, but it seems like you know why not I'm just do it. Let's... Are they still going to do the sale? Yes. In the back here. Yes. Yeah, I don't have the date of that. It's sometime it's in September. September. Yeah. Um, I think it was after the trustees meeting, and it was like a Saturday and a rain date of or mm. the day after Sunday. So I will, I'll get in touch with, uh, with her about that. Then um, there's an odd thing I did get, I, I, I kind of hesitated to send this, but then I thought, well, you know, why not? Um, there was a, uh, a solicitation from our Michelson Galleries um, who did the restoration of her, the uh, Gnotic painting. And apparently um, in the course of, you know, his communication with them, Alan, who was, uh, at that time, coordinating that project may have expressed some admiration for um, this painter's work. And so Michelson Gallery got in touch and said, if you're ever interested in one of these paintings, we'd like to, you know, cut you a, a nice deal. Um, I know we're not really in the in the business of art collection. collecting, but yeah. um, it's really not necessarily up to me. Is anyone interested in this at all? Did anyone look at the... Look him up. Oh, look, Jamal, just out of curiosity. I, yeah. The only thing I thought was it might be a good thing if we had like 
people who wanted to raise money and donate it. Yeah. That's mm. what I was thinking. Yeah. Right? Like if there was a group that was really interested in raising money and donating it, but then it does put you in the position of like, how much is this worth? And valuing the art and storing the art and like and it set it sets it sets a precedent that right. you don't necessarily want to put it out, but Correct, because this was the second approach we've had about purchasing. Yeah. Yeah. Also, like if we wanted a collection of art for the walls here, we might want to start with like, what art do we want on the walls? Not like this person lives in Hadley, mm -hmm. so should we purchase their work? Mm -hmm. Like that seems, yeah, it seems like we put some thought into to that if that was something we wanted to pursue. Given the quality of those Grecian urns on the shelf above the DVDs, if you haven't seen them, they're from students at Hopkins, oh. and a couple of them are, I was just amazed. I would not have expected that level quality from a uh, high school students. I mean, they're juniors and seniors, I think, but they're really exquisite. The execution as well as the designs. And I mean, these people, how long have the Dale Chihuly plastic mobile mm -hmm. things been? And people still make comments about mm -hmm. them all the time. Yeah. Never mind the little child who stands on the couch and tries to grab it and I have to go and yell at the child. I have no problem doing that. But, um, because the mother was paying no attention. Anyway, but I think being host to, and even when Luna did that little picture gallery thing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that was That's enormously cute. successful. I would, this is not to say that I don't think there should be other artwork, but I think, I mean, you always need to be careful about those kind of gifts because what are you committing anybody else to in the future? And does the policy say that you have the absolute right to deaccession something or whatever? But um, I would like to encourage the art teachers to use us as a gallery. Yeah, I don't think that's going to stop anytime soon. Mm -hmm. I, you know, mm -hmm. That's a great partnership that we have with uh, Aaron and Hopkins. So I think that that's going to be an ongoing thing. I'm just saying I appreciate it. I enjoy it. Yeah. What I have seen so Absolutely. far, I have actually liked to look at and enjoyed. And I love it. I love the masks that are there. Yeah. I, I agree with you. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I forgot about those. Mm -hmm. Those have been around a while. I also like that that just inherently is then sort of art that's rotating through. Yeah. You know, so. And it gives the the kids the opportunity to feel invested in on display. And I think that would be the kind of art I would like to encourage. Yeah. Opportunities. Okay. Sorry to have digressed. So I guess we'll, we'll leave that for now. Um, I, I think that's really all I have for this moment. I had a question, Patrick. Yep. You had sent an email back in uh, <coughs> date here um, about helping friends that had oh, the yes. on a Saturday morning. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and I meant to I meant to bring that up. Um, so it turns out that that is uh, is all sorted out. Um, we have. Sue, now that Sue's working on Saturday, she's actually coming in at nine, so that works out just fine. So they oh, okay. in as soon as she okay. So she's coming in at nine as part of her paid hours. She was already doing it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just wasn't aware. I thought she was coming in at nine thirty, closer to you know, closer to opening, but she's coming in at nine because um for the arcane reason that the um our timesheets need to show like a clocked out lunch, so everybody had to shift their time you know, to make way for that. And so, um, so she's coming in 15 or 30, I don't remember what it was, but she's adjusted her time to come in for that. So I guess then my larger question, which I know I emailed back, is that if we're, so then in 
instead of saying we are available during library hours for meetings, we really are available when staff is here. I mean, that's really what we're saying. Um, I mean, for, for meetings, for meetings to not for anyone just to come in and use the library, but like, you know, I'm all about equity and access. And just because they thought to ask, hey, could you come in early and let us in to use the room? Doesn't mean that everyone in the community would feel empowered to approach the director and say, hey, we know your policy says you, we can book this room for the, the hours, but could you come in early for us? Right. So like, do we need to update our policy? Do we like, I mean, it, anyone can come and ask the same question. And would we always have the same answer? Would we always say, yes, we'll accommodate you at 9 a.m.? Or yes, I'll try to find volunteers for you because you want to stay until 10 p.m. Like, what is our policy? And I'm hoping this is temporary and we'll get our touch pad sometime yep. soon. But. <laughs> but until we're there, I don't, you know, I don't know if we have a thought. Do we need to adjust our building policy? I think we were reacting to a complaint, perhaps we would do that. But I think at this point, we're just trying to, to maintain the flexibility to accommodate, you know, the people that are looking. I mean, we have boards and committees that meet here. Um, we have in-town departments. Is it fair that they have a key? And members of the public don't. I mean, they're not necessarily. Well, I think that that's different, right? I mean, if they're town employees, the same way, like if one of us wanted to have a meeting here, we have right. But some of those are public meetings. Yes, you know, the, the, awesome. these are not just. Um, but people can get in because they've opened the door. It's right. So if the planning board has a meeting here, hmm. not just the planning board can come in. That anyone can come in to attend the planning board meeting. Right. But, I mean, there are still, I mean, the people that need, members uh, of the public people that need to, someone to be, to let them yeah. in, right? So if we're willing to accommodate one group, I'm just making the argument that we have to be prepared to accommodate all groups or say no. Or say no to all groups? I mean, yeah, yes. If we simply can't because we can't find the, the flexibility, we can't find the volunteers, we can't find the... Well, are you going to... So in this case, you reached out and said, will you volunteer? Will you do that every time? Like, is that part of your job? Or someone here's job to say, let me see if I can find volunteers for you. You want to come in at 7 a.m.? Let's see if I can find volunteers for you. You want to have a meeting till not, you know, 11 p.m.? Let me see if I can find volunteers for you. I'm just asking. Because we have a policy and we're deviating from the policy. I'm. If no one has a problem with this, maybe it's just me. I mean, I don't have a problem with this particular thing, but I have no. a problem with the inconsistency right. no, of what's posted on the website. So, it's our policy. We can change it or not change it. Just so I think the next question is: Have there been has there been any more information about the access? <clears throat> Right. I mean, at some point, it will become irrelevant. It's not right now. That's We've been waiting. Long time coming. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was my last round of being. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Could, could somebody tell me what you're talking about? So there's supposed to be, when we built the library, it's built in such a way that, if you notice, your access to the main part of the library can be locked off and these rooms can be open. Oh. So there's supposed to be a code on the door that allows, like if we gave you the code, you could come in after hours and, you know, sign up and have an event here. And, you know, it would, with no impact on the library because mm -hmm. it would be closed. Mm -hmm. You um, also have access to the restrooms. And, and one yeah. smaller meeting room. Yeah. And so we, when we were building the library, we we're putting this through and, a member of, I believe it was the fire department, had struck a deal with this person that was going to do this for the whole town. And that was my last stint as a trustee. So that had to be three years ago. Four. They were supposed to put that pad in. This person came to our meeting. His name was Joe. 
Hi, Joe, if you're out there. <laughs> We'd love to see you. Um, he was supposed to put access on our doors so that we could open these meet, these rooms to the public, which is why we built But the not them. otherwise open. And now it's been... Years. Years. And we have not which, yet gotten just, them. Just to, just to, you know, not lay this all in um, Joe's door or any, any particular individual, What what's happening is that there's a fiber optic network that's going in to connect all the municipal, the municipal buildings. Uh, and that has been delayed and delayed and delayed. And then, you know, the last time that I checked a couple of months ago, there was some issue with the routing of the fiber optic along Route 9, which is under construction. They had to move something, you know. So it's it's just been... If we had, I think if we had known, if we had known on day one, um, I think we probably would have. And we could have just had a separate key for the front door. Well, we could we could have found some sort of break, right? right? There yeah. might have been some sort of a temporary workaround. But if you just say, oh, well, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, yeah. then nobody wants to be bothered with coming yeah. up with an elaborate workaround. But whatever it is now, two and a half years in, or what is it, two? It's two. I was off a full mm -hmm. term. And well, I mean, just, since before. we opened to the, since we opened the again which would have been July, I think it was in July 21 so it's been a full two years and um, you know but, but that's you know again that's sort of what we're trying to work around to provide what access that we can and when it's reasonable to do so you know for a group that is you know a community group but sure we can just say no can't do it I mean we could have a low-tech solution right we could use the the realtor lock pad that we had during the construction phase when none of us had keys. I mean, that's an or option Or we could too. change the policy to when staff is here. Yeah. And that kind of covers it, right? Like That, that covers this covers instance, it. yes. But, but it covers, we, like, a future instance if someone comes and says, can I do this? And Patrick says, well, there's staff here. Yes, you can do it. Yeah. That's another way to cover it. Right. I'm, I'm just thinking. Right. I mean, the easiest thing to do would to provide the low tech solution, and then we can say you could book any time. But, but ideally, we were going to have everything electronic. We were going to have a people book on the website, right? Like, really make it easy. Well, the, and the, the problem with the low tech solution is that once you have a code, you have the code. You can and not, it, not try to right? choose anyone. Anyway. Change it like after every use, you would change it. We'd have or to know. Okay. That's yeah. a lot of work, right? Like. Mm -hmm. Would anyone like to put forward a motion to amend the meeting room policy temporarily to indicate that the library meeting spaces will be available when staff That's are in I, the building? Yeah. Well, yes, but um, I'll give me to make a motion. Okay. I'll make a Fine. motion. <laughs> and how does that apply to civic, not civic, but uh you know, town boards or committees, that doesn't apply. No, they have a key. They, they don't have a key. They have to go and get a key from someone. They they mm -hmm. implicitly need to be, you know, approved to be using the space. Somebody needs to call and say, hey, we have a ZBA meeting. Can I have it? They can't, I mean, you're not supposed to just walk in and, yeah. you know, sit yeah. down and have a meeting here. You're supposed to know about it, you know. Oh, sure. Yeah. But, so yours, I misunderstood. So you're saying... That right now people are booking us for outside time and getting keys, but only people from town. Yes, and I have been telling folks like, look, you if you you know, um, you know there have been a number of uh, trainings and things in your phone, public safety folks or DPW folks, and I just say you know, I'm not going to be here that at that time. There's no staff here at that time, but you know your town department. You can go, if you can go to town hall or you can get Gary Bird to let you in, then feel free. Mm -hmm. And and that's fine, but I know about it, and it goes through me. And it's not just folks coming. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I wouldn't want just random. Departments are different because of that. They are, but at the same time, that that covers one that covers one thing. It doesn't really cover, you know, the meetings that take place where you have like, you know, we had some ZBA meetings in here where there were like fifty people. Maybe some of you were even at it, but they, you know, they were quite full meetings, um, and that does require some thinking. And I'm okay with it as long as. Prepare for it. Um, yeah. Usually, when it comes to the game of ZBA meetings, I'm pretty sure Jennifer's game is keeping the ZBA meetings in Canada. Because that'd be your filming, anyways. Yeah.
I think the main thing is that we know who is in here. So if there's anything that happens with the space, you know, we know who to ask, right? Right. I mean, the town knows that they have to sign out the room, right? So there's not a conflict of room usage, regardless of who's coming in or how they get in. But the room itself has to be signed out. True. Right. Or is Who's Jennifer just room? giving in? No. They, they get in touch and I'm yeah, you know, whatever, so that's whatever it is. So I, I know that it's going on. We do, yes. you know, try to prepare for it. So, if, you know, there are going to be members of the public who lock the inner doors and, um, and all of that. I, I'm actually wondering, since we didn't come prepared to like review our green right. room policy, we should, we should just review table it. Table this. Okay. Um, it, it also seems to be like it ain't actually broke um kind of situation but it, it could, could, could be better tumble right, off right, right. the table right. and break I, <laughs> um and so maybe that I, I i don't feel prepared to vote to change it and then later realize like mm -hmm. oh we just disqualified something that we would have wanted to be. yeah right i mean because like this is now the second time where we've been opening the building for a different group because we had staff in the building, right? So the, I'm going to get the name wrong, Northampton. The, the Friday yeah, morning. Exactly. The Friday morning thing. And Luna was here and was part of that. And now this, because Sue is here, which is fine. I don't object to any of these things. I'm just, you know, I'm just mindful of the fact that, you know, well, we should be clear. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. The preschool thing was sort of an official coordinated thing with yeah. the library. It's just that it happened outside of the hours for you know for okay. reasons yeah. now that have been changed and we're doing it so that it is more convenient and we're not you know shifting staff to a time that is not optimal um, but that wasn't just like an outside group coming in that was something that was coordinated between staff and some group and so what we're actually discussing is a is a is different i actually thought it was the same as this is the friends of friends of hadley preschool and so okay. I, I don't, I don't honestly remember um, because the conversation, you know, they started doing this about a year ago, and then I don't exactly remember what the rationale was for it. But it, again, it was something that I found that I could accommodate, and so I, you know, my preference was to accommodate it, um, and it wasn't a huge lift to do it. So we, we were able to do it, um, and now again with Sue here, it's just you know, it's not really a big deal to do it does set a precedent you're right i mean it, by virtue of having said yes you know it last year it's it's hard to then say no so i get that um but i don't necessarily have that much of a problem personally you know when people come in and say well you know we'd love to do something on sunday i don't know that i can help you with that you know but if i see an easy solution i would try to you know make the building as, as available as possible because that's what we told the public when we built it so yeah but then technically, isn't the Hadley Preschool sort of a town? It's a not for profit. Yeah, I mean, it's like the Friends of the Library Minutes. So it's, a, it's, it's a town community organization, but it's not like a town. It's in It's town. not run through no. or by the no. school. No, no. No okay. okay. So then we will sort of come back to meeting room policy or are we yeah I think that's good a, enough that's a good idea with the way things are I'd like to review I think okay so. okay I'm just checking um I had a question that I had texted you before and wondering if we would consider Maybe I would like to make a motion if the director's report is done to to go into executive session, unless the subcommittees are going to take no time. I just hesitated to be at an hour meeting and then go into executive session for like another hour and not be at my best. <laughs> I want to be at my best. So um, I had made the suggestion that we kind of table the subcommittees or move them till after the executive session. But I didn't, I had said that to Lynn before we came. 
Uh, I am happy to do whatever the board thinks. Um, I think the annual valuation folks have very little bit to say. I don't know. Just if you have community feedback. I think, I think, so what I, I could say a few things that perhaps we can think about and then discuss at our next meeting. Okay. Rather than trying to have a discussion on that tonight. Could you make it real quick and then maybe send us all an email with thinking topics? Yes. I think if I have something in front of me to respond to or think about, it would be more effective for my learning style. Yeah. Um, so this subcommittee, um, which is essentially me and Allison, um, are, you know, we are interested in soliciting community feedback, um, but we kind of need to, to be thinking as a board about what exactly do we want to know more about? Um, there's a way in which, and I think Allison can probably speak to this, um, an, an initiative like this could set up expectations beyond which we could, you know, easily um, mobilize around, let alone, you know, advocate for or grow into. Um, so, for instance, there's been some chatter about should the library be open on Sundays? Well, we don't want to go to the public and say, should we be open on Sundays? And everyone says, yes. And then actually there's no way we can make that happen. So that would be setting up some expectations that uh, would not be fair to anyone. Um, so an initiative like this, it might be helpful for us to think about like, what are the things that we actually want to learn more about? I think some of the things that have come up in our discussions around this before have been, um, do we want to expand the hours? If so, when? Um, and of course, like in tandem with that, um, expanding staff um, and, uh, you know, staff hours, like growing positions or, or number of positions. Um, are there programming desires in terms of building something bigger, adding new things, retiring things, reimagining that? Um, collections, um, I think. Patrick, you've spoken a number of times about building a library of things. I think that's a really like exciting idea. Do other people want to sort of inquire about other ways that the library can provide collections that are responsive to the public? There may be some other categories like that that we can think about. Um, but uh, in order for us to kind of move towards a, a survey that will deliver us useful information. Um, I, I think I'd like us to have a little bit more of a conversation about what do we want to find out from the public? Um, what are we interested in developing or growing here in the library? Um, and, you know, and so, and I think that's our next step. And it also depends on how would we get that information, right? So we sort of went in there for a survey, but if, for example, we wanted to understand why teens do or do not use the library, I would not recommend that we do a survey, right? We can go into Hopkins, we can ask, right? There's other ways to get a better set of information from teens, just an example. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of that that we can do, depending on what we're looking for and if it's on a targeted group. So as we started thinking about, oh, what would a survey look like? And then this, the Sunday email came up, uh, you know, like that just further made us think, what are we actually hoping to get from this? Okay. But we realized this discussion could take like an hour. That's why we right. were like, No, oh. that's fine. <laughs> well, how about it? Can I suggest too that you ask staff members if there are areas where they would like where more information from the public would be useful to direct and guide them as well. So not see, just- I see that as like a parallel process, not one that needs to inform our discussion. Like, I think that we need to engage staff in a similar conversation. Yeah, oh, that's what I- But it doesn't have to precede us having no, no, that no. conversation. No, I, I was yeah. just saying staff 
Because I hadn't heard it yet. That's all. Yeah. No, that's fine. Uh, I will just say very briefly about the director evaluation. Um, Susan and I have put together a survey for staff members that we want to talk about with them before we ask them to complete it. Um, we shared it with the HR director, and he made some constructive comments um, for things that might be improved. And Susan and I have not had a chance to review that and incorporate those changes. But as soon as we do, then we will be in touch with staff members to ask if there are other areas we haven't covered. Did that summarize it? Okay. So we're done. Do you want me to do capital campaign? If you have two minutes or less, sure. Yes. Although I would argue, other folks took more than two minutes. Hello. <laughs> I definitely took more than two minutes. <laughs> um, capital campaign. I did the research online. We are allowed to raise money. I'm looking more into guidance from the MBLC. They have some great guidance oh, good. for raising money. So I'm reading that. Once I kind of have all that together, I plan on kind of calling a meeting of those interested in the capital. It was like 30 seconds. Ooh. See? The prize. You used, we used the rest of your time there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> She's so generous. Okay. <clears throat> if there aren't any additional items to discuss, then I would ask for a motion to go into executive session to conduct contract negotiations with the director with the intention of not returning to open session at the conclusion of it. Motion? So moved. Second? Second. I believe we have to be polled individually. Correct. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 